Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala, president of Audioholics. Today I'd like to talk to you about setting up powered speakers or powered towers or even passive tower speakers that have bass sections in them. And this is mostly to do with your AV receiver and how to deal with bass management on them. Okay, so let's start out simple. Let's define what a powered tower is these days. Typically you get speakers from companies like DefTech or Golden Ear, to name a couple. They offer you um, these tower speakers with basically built-in subwoofers. So the whole bottom portion of the speaker has, you know, bass drivers with a powered amplifier built in, and you're getting the power directly from the amplifier of that speaker, not from your AV receiver. Now the rest of the speaker, the mids and the tweeters, those are passive, and you get the power from your AV receiver. Now there's multiple ways you could connect this, and the manufacturers all have different recommendations. Typically, I would tell you to look at the manufacturer recommendations and use that as a starting point. But I'd like to elaborate a bit more and give you some other options here that might better suit your needs. So the simplest approach would be if you just get to hook up a regular AV receiver or just a two channel receiver or even an integrated amplifier and you just run speaker level connections to each speaker. By running a speaker level connection as a speaker cable from your AV receiver or amplifier into these speakers, you're activating all the circuitry in the speakers. So the speaker already knows to set, send the bass signals to the powered subwoofer section, and then it sends the power from the receiver up to the mids and tweeters. You're done. I mean, that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And I'm sure you're gonna see that in the manufacturer's recommendation as a starting point as well. But what do you do when you have an AV receiver and you're dealing with LFE and you're dealing with um, all the speakers that are set small, you wanna be able to reintegrate that bass into those subwoofers? Well, you've got a couple of options. Number one, you set the speakers large and you set subwoofer to no. Okay, now that's the easiest option, but there's some disadvantages to that option. Number one, you don't have any LFE or subwoofer level control at all. So the base level is set based on whatever's coming out of the speaker cable with all the other channels set smaller being summed into that speaker cable going into the powered tower. The other problem is a lot of these Avery receivers um, they're really designed to work with a subwoofer output and when you say no and you reintegrate the bass into the main channels They typically um, they limit a lot of the LFE that goes into that channel because they don't want to dynamically overload the receiver or the digital sections of the receiver So there's very few products on the market that will give you full LFE output without downgrading You know 10 dB or 15 dB of bass so this is one I really don't recommend using. If you're going to use these speakers as your dedicated powered subwoofers in your system, then I would still use the subwoofer on connection. And I would go to the next option, which I'm going to propose. So guys, the next option I would recommend to you would be to set the main channels to small and the subwoofer to on. And what this is going to do now is it's going to send all the channels set to small, whether it's your front channels, your center channel, your rear channels, your surround channels, all those channels that are being bass managed are gonna be, all the bass from those channels are gonna be summed into the subwoofer output and it's gonna be sent into your power towers through a line level connection. So set it to small and set subwoofer to on. So now you're gonna have speaker level connections going to your speakers and you're gonna to have to use the subwoofer out of your receiver, either use a Y splitter like we talked about in other videos or if your, if your receiver has two subwoofer outputs, use one of the connections from that output to the left speaker and use the other one to the right speaker. And that'll give you, now it'll give you base management. It'll give you subwoofer and LFE control to your towers. So you're basically using those towers now as powered subwoofers. And that gives you more control of the base, gives you better integration between all the channels because now you have all the base being properly summed where they should go. It's going to the speaker that has the best bass capability in your system. So that's a great option. Now, a more advanced option, and this is the option that I kind of prefer to use, and this is an option actually Golden Ear recommends. They recommend you set the speakers to large, set the subwoofer to on. Now, there's one more setting you have to look at when you do this. If you set the speakers to large, and you set the subwoofer to on, you gotta make sure you don't set the double bass to on. Usually that's an option, like it says LFE plus main, or, or it says bass output both, like it does on Yamaha. 
if you set double bass to on, you're gonna get way too much bass going to those subs because it's gonna sound boomy or bloated because now you're copying the bass twice between the main channels and then going back into the subwoofer channel again. So make sure if you set your main speakers to large in this connection method, set the subwoofer to on, make sure you set the both channel, uh, the both option to no or just subwoofer out or THX mode. One of those options, depending on what receiver you have, that's gonna give you your best connection and it's gonna give you your best integration. Now, the reason why I like to use the large setting too is in many cases, uh, these powered towers have built-in crossovers in their speakers. So you might get better integration between the towers and the subwoofer if you leave it to large and you don't basically filter that high pass. You don't do a high pass twice and you might filter out too much of the mid bass if you do that, if you set it to small. So it really comes down to being able to measure you know, use a program like REW with, with, a, with one of those Omni mics or just a cheap mic, I would really recommend setting up a microphone at the listening position, messing around with the various bass management options. We talked about large and small, messing around with the crossover point a little bit, but I always recommend starting out at 80 hertz. And do some measurements and see how good the integration is depending on how you make your settings. And check it for more than one seat. Check it at your two money seats, if you will and just see how the bass goes. I would run basically um, both channels at the same time, the main channels, and just sweep from you know 100, 100 hertz down to 20 hertz and check out the integration at the crossover point and see where you get the best integration without the dips, okay? Now, there's another option that um, I wanna talk about. It's these giant tower speakers. You know, years ago, I used to use these speakers from RBH called the SXT2s. And they have two 10 inch drivers, huge amount of output on their subs. And then they have the mids and tweeter module on top of that. And these were completely passive speakers. Now the way I hook these up is similar to what I would tell you with the power towers. I use an external amplifier for the subwoofer output, plug that into the external amplifier, and then plugged speaker level from that external amplifier into each of the subwoofers of those, pow of those uh, passive towers. So basically I was feeding just those outputs from the LFE and sub outputs into those base modules of the speakers. Then I ran speaker level from my AV receiver or my, my, in my case I have separate, so I ran it from my power amp into the top portion of the speakers of the satellite speaker. And I, in my case, I ran the speakers on small just because the slope of the crossover, when I use small, it gave me basically the same um, roll off rate when you combine the electronic crossover and the uh, crossover of the speaker, gave me the same roll off rate that I was getting from the subs and it gave me the best integration at the crossover point. Again, measurements matter. So if you can make measurements, it really makes a world of difference. So basically that's it guys. Um, power towers are a great option for you. If you don't have the space to add separate subwoofers, you're basically getting two subwoofers in one because you have each tower that's producing bass, you're getting multi-sub. Now it might not be the most ultimately located spots that you would choose for these subs, but EQ can help. And that's another reason why you'd wanna use the line level connections to those power towers, because now a lot of these processors and receivers coming out have built in parametric equalizers, or you can even buy the device that we use, the mini DSP, hook it up to your subwoofer output, plug it into your uh, amplifier, and then now you can control the bass, you can EQ the bass, and you could really help with the positioning of your subs by taming out the room modes with EQ, especially when you have multi-sub. Multi-sub widens your sweet spot, it gives you more consistent bass from seat to seat, and it makes the EQ more effective as a result. So that's our recommendation, guys. Um, do me a favor, let us know what power towers you're using and how you're hooking them up. And let us know what other videos you'd like us to see on how to do setups on your equipment. You know, I'm here to help. I'd like to guide you guys. So if you like this video, thumb it up, you know, share it. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Put it on Facebook, put it on your Twitter, put it on your Instagram, share the love. And guys, until next time, keep listening.